everyone. My name is Devin. This is my Uncle Tommy. And thank you for tuning into my channel, Devin's Mastermind. So, uh, Uncle Tommy, what we're going to get into today, we're going to get into the Texas and Oklahoma matchup. We're going to get into the NFL rules, the Olympics, and Hank Aaron. So, first of all, I'm going to start with Texas and Oklahoma for the past few days. They've been talking, they've been talking about potentially Texas and Oklahoma, you know, joining the SEC. That's been on the news, and they might call it like the SEC, like the Super Conference. So I just wanted to know, what's your thoughts on that? Well, then one thing I want to say is I, I, want, I appreciate you uh, inviting me on your channel, and all is uh, uh, a privilege of being here, and I, I appreciate you uh, inviting me on, man. Uh, what I think about that is definitely, I, I, you know. Um, the SEC, it's no secret mm. about the SEC is a powerhouse yeah, it's and a has power. always been. Uh, we beat ourselves up every Saturday, whether it's uh, South Carolina or <laughs> Tennessee or Georgia or Alabama. Alabama. The competition and everybody realized that uh, that it's a conference to be reckoned with, mm -hmm. and it has been for, for many a decades. And so it, it's, it's no secret everybody want to come in and join in on a good thing. So I, I think, you know, I think that's good, you know, uh, and we now get some recognition yeah. as, <laughs> as what we do down here in the South. Yeah. So I, I think it's good. I think it's good. Yeah. You know, they also been saying that they've been talking about this for the past six plus months, they done said. So this is not really like the first time they had been saying something. No, they actually said that they kind of been already had this idea. And they said this could happen within a few weeks before the season even starts. And then, you know, like when you look at Texas and Oklahoma in the Big 12, because, you know, the Big 12 is a conference where nobody can't play defense. It's such a high scoring affair. There's such a shootout like 51-48 or 79-77 kind of type kind of tight conference but yeah I mean Texas and Oklahoma I think uh, it's kind of a little iffy iffy but then I think okay well, Georgia probably would be a little bit better than what they are because Georgia can't even be the elite can't beat the elite like Alabama or Clemson or Ohio State and then you know Georgia Oklahoma played in the Rose Bowl a few years ago and of course we had beat Oklahoma but Oklahoma still gave us a run for their money so I think Georgia and Oklahoma kind of playing each other I think that will kind of be pretty good. And then Georgia and Texas playing because, you know, Texas had won a few years ago in the Sugar Bowl when they had, they had beat them 28-21. to 21. And I, we were so shocked because I was like, do y'all let Texas beat a Georgia team? <laughs> I know. I know. Um, and, you know, that opened up, opened up things here for us uh, and, and all. It's... Uh, it's, 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 it's a conference that, you know, got a lot of talent and mm -hmm. it, it, it got everybody eye on. And you, you look at it, and when they had the NFL draft, a lot of players come down, you know, come out of the SEC. Mm -hmm. A lot of them. I mean, and quite a few of them. So, and, and, you know, if you want to play on the next level, come to the SEC. Yeah, that's the main conference to be in. Yes, it is. Like I said, them Texas, you know, in Texas, Oklahoma is a, they call it the Red River rivalry, and they're, you know, they're for that hat that they, that golden hat that they be wearing. If some, let's say, if Oklahoma wins or Texas win, they get that golden hat. So I, I don't honestly, it's a little iffy, iffy to me because like, you know, you already got Texas A&M there, and Missouri there because you know Texas A&M and Missouri used to be in the Big Twelve, but. Potentially having Texas and Oklahoma moving, they also need to talk about to the other schools because then if that's the case, then well, who's going to be in the Big 12? What are those other two teams going to be? Because the Big 12 only has 10 teams yeah. in their conference of football. So they, I don't know who they would be putting in. I don't know if they would probably get Nebraska back or something to play in the Big 12. But all I know is uh, it's a little weird to have both Texas and Oklahoma, at least have Oklahoma, but probably not Texas. Hmm. Hmm, it is. And what surprised me most of this whole thing is how were they able to keep all this a bit secret? And yeah. all? I, just, I mean, I, this didn't break until this week, I heard about. But then, like what you just, uh, just said, they've been talking about this for months. I mean, for a good 
half of a year yeah, we of moving, know. and nobody knew it. And that's what <laughs> that's amazing. That mm -hmm. is amazing. So uh, we, I'm, you know, hey, I'm looking for, I'm looking for this to happen. And from the reports that's out there in the news media, mm -hmm. it's gonna happen. And uh, all I got to say is bring it <laughs> you better bring it <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah so i know next up we, next topic we want to get into the nfl rules so i'm sure you heard like in the nfl if let's say a team has a COVID outbreak or a, yeah coronavirus outbreak that team or both those teams can be considered a loser of and all that stuff which i don't think that's kind of fair and then you have two coaches that are out. I think the Patriots coach and one other coach from an, from another team. I heard that they were out because mm -hmm. they didn't want to get the vaccine. And then you know DeAndre Hopkins, he's the right receiver for the Arizona Cardinals. He was talking about mm -hmm. he doesn't want to get it either. And I'm like, well, what if it does? What if Corona still comes and gets you? Then what you gonna do? And then that's kind of hurting your team and all mm -hmm. that stuff because you're the best. He he's one of the best wide right receivers in the league, and him not getting it. I mean, that'd be on him. That'd be his fault. It wouldn't be the NFL's fault. It'd be his fault. Right. That's as a uh, player. Uh, that is kind of like tied to your job. But I also understand. Now check this out. I do understand that you can't make anybody do anything they don't want to do. I understand that. But this is a business, and folks need to look at that as a. Uh, a business like you have a job description you know you have to do this this and this and what the NFL did um, they're not gonna punish the players who got the vaccine is is you know it, but they're making it harder for the white guys who don't want yeah. to take it I mean hey at the end of the day these players they get paid they gonna get a money they get money and so I mean, and taking the shot, you know, hey, I want to get paid. Yeah. And and that's, that's the way they need to look at this, you know. It's um, you doing it to take the shot. I took the shot. Me too. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we took the shot because we want to protect the one we love, our yeah. family, and people who are all around us. Yeah. And we want to protect that paycheck and all. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's just part. Of, I think it's just part of the job. I think yeah. these... Should go ahead if you a uh, uh, if if you a high level rank official in that organization on that team, mm -hmm. you need to lead by example and get that and, and yeah and get, get that, that shot team. yeah you gotta get that shot you got to because like I said like you said one of our loved ones again and let's say they have a horrible horrible really bad immune system I'm give I'm getting it and then I'm giving it to them I didn't know that. How would I be able to live myself with that? So that's why I think these NFL players, like you said, they just need to think of, okay, who am I putting on? Who am I putting on that risk? Who am I putting on in harm's way, and all of that stuff? So I, and I think in the end, because I heard in the NBA, you know, they're actually saying that everybody should get the vaccine in the NBA, but in the NFL, it's like they're not making it mandatory for the people to get the shot. And then it's like, well, y'all say, now y'all want to say y'all want to have full stadiums or y'all expect full stadiums this coming year. I mean, I'll just go ahead and get it. Like, it's not that hard. Like, mm -hmm. I understand. I mean, if you, I can see if you had some reasons, but some of these players look like they really don't have no reasons of why they don't want to get it. But it's like, okay, if you want to be safe, then go ahead and get the shot. Yeah, yeah, most, most definitely take the shot. I mean, um. Uh... Uh, and, and I'm glad you brought that about the NBA. Uh, I, I was at home uh, looking at the Atlanta Hawks, and when this came down about the COVID-19, and um, hey, the, the NBA they shut it down right there on the spot, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. and they figured out a way of trying to have the games in the bubble. Yeah, they went down to Orlando and uh, got in that sports complex. They put everybody in the bubble. And figure out a way to 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 have this game, uh, uh, have the games uh, played. Yeah. And so I commend the NBA on what they did yeah. and all. And um, and I just think you know, uh, 
in all the major sports, they need to start. You know, it starts at leadership. Yeah, and uh, they 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 have to start at the top and trickle down to the bottom. So I I, I like the way the NBA did that. Uh, they they was head above heel above the rest of them on doing that. So I have to commend them, give them their their progress on that. Yeah, yeah, I agree hundred percent with you. Yeah, talking. yeah, yeah. So. And I know next, so the next topic we want to get into the Olympics, the Tokyo Olympics, you know, the Olympics, go, or I think already started today, and it's going to be from July today to August 7. So, I, what's your thoughts on that, of having the Olympics, and what's well, been going on? Uh, that Olympics, <laughs> to me, Devin, is like having coffee without cream. <laughs> it's a, or having, uh, a car without gas. Yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's common it, sense. Yeah, what you're trying to put it. Yeah, in. yeah. I mean, uh, you, you sports in general is a spectator event. Yeah, you gotta have the fans. I, I think you, at some point you gotta have the fans. There. You gotta have yeah. You gotta have you people support. It. Support. Yeah. And as I looked at that opening ceremony. All there was a, just a bunch of empty seats and all, um, and there was some, of course, some protests going on outside mm. of the stadium, and uh, they had already sent home some athletes because they tested positive on this thing because it's still spreading the COVID nineteen mm. and all. Um, so it, I just feel like. Uh, again, I just feel like maybe maybe we should have this done a little different or yeah. postpone it for a little bit later yeah. and before we can uh, before they did did this and all and all. It's it's not the Olympic we came to uh, uh, know and, and grow up to yeah. to have. Uh, we've seen in the past years past. Yeah, because you know in 1996, you know the Olympics were here in Georgia, and that's where it started for us in Georgia and you know now it's in Tokyo and then you it, it's just been a little it's been a little weird to see in the Olympics especially with the USA mm -hmm. basketball team them losing their two exposition games because you know that didn't, that started since 1992 they were mm -hmm. like 54 and 2 all time and now they're 54 and 4 yeah. and those are exposition games since 1992 so it was a little it's just a little ugh. yeah it Man. is it is I, I, yeah. it is it, it, it lost its, its, its taste and flavor because <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I'm just excited. You know, it's, I know a lot of it's take delay because of the the time zone and when they had the event actually happen. But I will come in and just be glued at my set to see who won the the swimming or the hundred meter or whatever. And I just couldn't wait to see it on TV. Now it's like maybe not too interested in it you know yeah this yeah. is this is not yeah especially what last year was going on what was yeah. going on last year and then somewhat still kind of this year not as much but it just feels weird just to be having all this stuff still having kind of football college football and it was so many games postponed and then you have still having players you haven't heard much but you still be having players like chris ball had the virus he had to miss yeah. two games against the clippers and the western Conference finals then you got Bradley Beals at Levine and whoever else I think got coronavirus. So now you have to fill in for those people. I mean, mm -hmm. they if, if anything, I think yeah, it was it's hard kind of having sports around this time. It, it is, it, it is, it is. Yeah, it, it is. Um, and um, we we just hope that again, everybody take the vaccine. Yeah. This will help in some of the issues yes. and, and uh, moving forward so yeah you, you're so right yeah yeah and I know the last topic we wanted to talk a little bit about the famous Hank Aaron who had fortunately passed away in January so rest in peace Hank Aaron he was a, he became a great legend he broke, you know, Babe Ruth's, root rec Babe Ruth's record I heard you said you went to games when you were younger and saw him and all that stuff so what's your thoughts on that with him and yeah, Hank Aaron and this how the impact he had on baseball and lives period Hank Aaron uh not only was a a, a, a good uh, baseball and athlete player he 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 came up 
ended some hard time in this country mm -hmm. uh, when segregation and not many opportunity for mm -hmm. minority in this country. And he had to endure with uh, racial slurs, uh, death threats against him and his family yeah. uh, for even trying to break, break Bay Ruth record. I yeah. could only imagine what he went through, mm -hmm. uh, but he did it. Uh, uh, he, that right there shows you that, you know, uh, you God was on his side mm -hmm. and he could do anything. You can achieve anything. He can achieve yeah. anything he had wanted as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I had to come. I just want to say just a few words about he. He's a, a great baseball. He was a great baseball player, and, and like I said, my dad, you know, took me and uh, my brothers to the game. Uh, a couple of times just watch just to, just to be around in that presence of that man um uh the, the great hank aaron and uh and may rest in peace yeah. uh uh all-star game i just wish the all-star game would stay in yeah. atlanta uh at that time yeah, yeah uh this year mm -hmm. uh to uh, commemorate him and the achievement that he had made an uh, impact on the game uh, but it, it it wasn't so. It just wasn't so. So, yeah. and I feel like now with all the, what has kind of gone, what happened with him and all that stuff, he left a he left as he left a great impact on people's lives and stuff. I feel like what they should do, and they should hurry up and do it. That Brave Stadium or whoever they should call it, the famous or Hank Aaron Stadium. Not not mm -hmm. only should they build a statue of him, they should name the stadium after him and even the highway after him. Because he's, he, he, I mean, like you said, for him to be, from him to go from people talking about him and all that stuff to bring him Babe Ruth's record and still just having the impact that he had, I mean, I feel like they should at least do something. At least name the stadium after him, mm -hmm. name the highway after him, potential name a school after him. And I yeah. heard that they were talking about that a few months, but they still haven't done it yet and all that stuff. Name a highway about Hank Aaron and all that stuff, and I feel like because you know in Texas, I heard Texas foot Texas Stadium and football. I heard that Ricky Williams and Earl Campbell, those are the two most famous running backs at Texas. I heard that eventually that they were gonna name the stadium after them instead of whatever the other guy's name was. Coach that had was named after the Texas Stadium. So like like you said, I feel like they should name a st stadium anything after Hank Aaron. Yeah, most definitely. He's uh, he has done a lot for the game and a lot uh, in the area as well uh, and stuff. So yeah, most definitely. We, it, something needs to be named after him to to honor him and the legacy that he uh, left behind. So yes, yes. So that that's definitely need to happen. Yeah. So let's get into this about. Do you think? Who do you think is a scary team to beat Clemson in the ACC? Wow. <laughs> wow. That's, uh, uh, you know, Georgia is going to play yeah. Clemson. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you know, uh, we, we, I think we could stick up and beat them. Mm. I think. <laughs> I don't see it. You don't see that. Especially, you know, that DJ Young Lele dude that was the quarterback for those two games, you know, he had two really great games again when he was playing for Clemson. I think he's a potential Heisman Trophy candidate or finalist for that award and potentially taking Clemson back to a national championship. Well, the, 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 but I, I just feel like. This time, this time, maybe we'll get one. You know, maybe, <laughs> maybe things was changed for, for Georgia this time. Uh, because, you know, we, we got to get over the hump. We, we got to beat the teams like Florida, Alabama, uh, the big teams. We got to beat them to get over the hump. Because if we don't, it's, mm -hmm. it could be kind of, Bad, another bad year for the Georgia fans. Yeah, Kirby Smart would lose his job. That's one. And then yeah. we would be known as a team that we just can't beat the elite. We're close to it, 
but we just can't never get the job done like Notre right. Dame because you know Notre Dame for the past few years they've been sucking they really haven't been able to beat Clemson even though they were way better than Clemson before but they haven't been able to beat Clemson Alabama Ohio State and all these other teams that are really really good in football so I think somewhat Georgia they have a chance but if they just keep on losing these big games, we'll always be known as a team. We can win against anybody in the SEC, like a Kentucky or a Missouri or all those teams, but we can't never beat an elite team like an Alabama, LSU, somewhat Texas A&M, yeah. and all those kind of teams. Yeah. I, I, and I have to agree on it, but I, I just feel this might be the year that we do it. Because um, for one thing, I, the reason why I say that, Cause nobody picking us no. to do. <laughs> that's that's one that's one of the things. Nobody picking us to do it. So uh, I just feel like it. Things might change this year for us. And yeah. and Kirby and his staff, he knows that. Um, you know, he got to produce down there at Georgia if he wants to uh, stay there. He got to produce. Cause the Georgia fan is not gonna accept anything less than uh, uh, a title, the yeah. championship title. And that's the goal. that's the ultimate goal. That's why we brought them over here. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I know about you know Clemson and the ACC. They're technically like the team because you know the ACC is not really good at their football you know, mm-hmm. as you expect them to be. But I got somebody who could potentially beat them, Clemson, if not Georgia, but North Carolina. Y- uh, yes, I will have to agree with you on that. You're right. Uh, and they were peaking a little bit last year. Mm-hmm. Um, they they got a good solid running game. Yeah. Uh, the quarterback was pretty good, decent, yeah. you know. His name is Sam, yeah, Sam Howell. Yeah. He, yeah, I heard that he had 68 passing touchdowns in his two seasons. That's more than Trevor Lawrence and the famous James Winston, who plays for the New Orleans Saints now. I mean, I think North Carolina, he's supposed to be a Heisman Trophy finalist. I think North Carolina can make some noise, potentially maybe even go to the CFP if they have a chance to. Now, I don't think they'll probably have that chance, but I could see North Carolina being like a – Rose Bowl victory kind of team mm-hmm. and all that. Yeah, yeah. And again, you know, and uh, Tech, Georgia Tech, they still <laughs> in a rebuilding stage, okay. and and you know, but they 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 switching more to a pro type offense down there. So we'll, we'll just have to wait and see what yeah. they do. And all. Yeah, we're, we're not looking for them to do much down, but at least they. They did in the right direction. Yeah, because some folks are saying that Georgia Tech could potentially not this year or next year, but potentially I don't really see it because if Georgia Tech was, they would have, they would have, for one, they would not lost to Clemson by 66 points. They lost to Clemson 73 to 7. I mean, if you can't beat Clemson, what makes you think, or you can't make some noise against Clemson, how are you going to make some noise against your rock with Georgia somewhere? <laughs> I know, and and we did. Uh, Georgia didn't play uh, Tech this year, and they didn't play for the what we call the Governor Cup, and so, uh, and so we we just hopeful that you know Tech get on board, and we'll just watch see how that program goes. Because mm-hmm. they consider Georgia and Georgia Tech a rivalry. For one, I felt like if you consider some of these teams a rivalry, I think you. Against rivalry because you know like Clemson, South Carolina, South Carolina had it where they beat Clemson five straight times, and then now Clemson's beating them six, seven straight times. But if you want to call those teams or just Georgia and Georgia Tech a rivalry, one well, I think the game needs to be a close game and a game that comes down to the wire. That's like a rivalry game, like how Auburn and Alabama played in twenty thirteen, and that was kind of a crazy game because that was a kick six. I mean, if if, it, if Georgia Tech and Georgia Tech want to be considered the greatest robbery, Georgia Tech needs to make some noise and do something. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, <laughs> but I think them games like that is more of a family and friend game. Yeah, it's house divided. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, and so, you know, um, what I've seen in, uh, a few years ago where Tech pulled out one over Georgia, and that's and I think Mark Rick was coaching yeah, that was yeah. in twenty sixteen. Yeah, because yeah. that was when Georgia was good, but it weren't good until that next year. Right, and then that's when, of course, we went to the national championship mm-hmm. and played Alabama. And ever since then, we've been good. Now I don't want to consider us being great, but we've been like in the top, kind of four, top five 
kind of not maybe like Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State. Those are my top three teams. Then put Georgia or at number four, at number five. Right, 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 right. Until until we can be the elite, we we can't mm-hmm. consider ourselves being that mm-hmm. high up on the scale. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I agree, you absolutely right. Until we be uh, Alabama and and beat them convincingly yeah. and beat them good, uh, you know, I you know we can't be in that top. If you're right, and if we be close enough. I might change my mind a little bit about Georgia and put Clemson on the top. Well, from what I see, I don't see nothing. I just see mm-hmm. Clemson beating Georgia 24-10. 24-10. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, you heard that. 24-10. <laughs> I say uh, Georgia could beat Clemson this year. I would say 30-21. to 21. Who, Georgia? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. I don't so. think so. Okay. Yeah, so we'll see. <laughs> so next up, let's talk about the Falcons. You know, the Falcons there is one of the suckiest teams in the league. They're not the they're not the suckiest, probably like the Jets or the Jaguars, but they're up there close to it and all that stuff. And then they traded Julio to the Titans and all that. Well, the Falcon coming in, they had a cap problem. They had to get below the cap. Uh, and it, I didn't want to see Julio go either, uh, but he was a casualty of the cap. He, they had to free up some money and uh, to sign the new players that they got now. Uh, so that was uh, one of the things that uh, happened there. Um we we never had a team when I started looking at them back in the sixty, we never had a, a <laughs> anything a, a decent team. I know we had the Grits Blitz and then we had Deion Sanders. We had a few players come through there, but one player is not gonna beat you. It take a team. Uh and so we we we, we just hadn't had of a good overall team. We, we had just one good player, Andrew, uh, William Andrews. Yeah. Uh, we had Steve Barkowski. Michael Vick. Uh, Billy White Shoe Johnson at the end of his career. We had him, yeah. you know. But we, yeah, we, we never had a core of, uh, of players that come through all together. Uh, we had Joel Williams. Uh, remember him? We never had a, a, a whole solid team of just one bunch of good solid players. We never had that. But I, I, we got a, 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 general, a GM now who making some hard. He had to make some hard decisions, uh, and we just have you know on paper. You could say, well, yeah, but it got to transform on the field. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's got to transform on the field than what's just on paper. So to get that Lombardi show because you know we started right when the Super Bear Super Bowl era came because you know before it used to be called the NFL Championships but now they call it the Super Bowl mm-hmm. and I don't know if that's making us we were cursed because we started in the Super Bowl era but that's a whole nother story to talk about oh, yeah. when that happens yeah, yeah. Okay. what goes on there and all that times and stuff yeah so uh, training camp is starting uh, next week um and maybe I get an opportunity uh, if I get my wife to take me down there and drop me off. I can see what what uh, what they doing in camp down there. But we we'll, we just have to keep an eye on and see. I, I don't see us winning that the division. Uh, I believe that division belongs to Tampa. Yes, most definitely belongs to Tampa. Yeah, I hope you say because yeah. Drew Brees with the Saints. I mean. They tried the best they could. They beat them two times in the regular season. I mean, yeah, the postseason they lost, but uh, I mean, I don't think, and especially with the situation with Aaron Rodgers, the only team I see seeing beating the Buccaneers is in the NFC. A period is just the Rams, but not the Seahawks, the Cardinals. Uh, they could not really them. I mean, the Forty Niners. They're kind of getting back up because you know they got a new quarterback. I see the Rams really being the only team to beat them, and then they got. A good quarterback and Matthew Stafford. He's from Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get that in. 
school goes. <laughs> Won't be having time to do nothing. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Good night.